everyone and welcome back to Kong and Culture TV. I'm Elizabeth here and I'm happy for you to join me in education about building value and overcoming objections. And those are two different things, but they go very, very well together. Uh, we're going to build value in ourselves, in our business, in our products. And we're going to overcome objections or learn a strategy for overcoming objections when we are dealing with people who have questions. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's build value. So how to and where to create value. I mentioned some at the beginning. But here we're just going to focus on building value for the prospect, building, building value for ourselves and building value for the business, which includes the product, the service and the compensation plan. So we create value for the prospect. Um, many people in today's society are high functioning stress addicts, workaholics who have forgotten what healthy feels like, and that freedom is still an option. Whether it's time freedom, financial freedom, health freedom, uh, there's a lot of different kinds of freedoms today that, uh, especially if we're in America, um, we don't even realize or sometimes have forgotten that we have. So we wanna compassionately question our prospect um prospects value of themselves so here are some questions and i like to think that these are compassionate though some people are preconceived to think that questioning is a negative thing uh, sometimes it's in the tone of voice so do you ever think about freeing up your schedule so you can spend more time with your family are you planning to retire do you plan to live the same way you do now? Do you have a plan B? What aspects of your life are you looking to upgrade? How is your health? What are you doing to take care of yourself? So none of these questions include, are you looking to get into a business? <laughs> um, are you keeping your options op open? Are you ready to spend 10 grand on some water machines? No, we don't say anything like that. We are compassionately asking a, pro a prospect to find where the value is in their life now and if they're trying to create more uh, in the future. Creating value of ourselves to a prospect. So one of the biggest failures of independent distributors is in the lack of support to fellow distributors, um, also to uh, fellow clients. So proper implementation of a plan in the first 45 to 60 days is paramount in setting a person up for success. Now, if you haven't done that, don't worry because we can start wherever we're at, which is right here right now. So we wanna be accountable for our thoughts, our words and our actions. Now that's kind of a loaded potato right there, but um, check into, into our thoughts. Are we making up stories for other people? Are we crossing people off the list who aren't ready to be crossed off because of a story we're telling ourselves? Is what we're saying out loud, does it match up with what we are thinking and what we are doing? And are we doing what we are telling people we say we're going to do? So thoughts and words and actions and accountability for them are our responsibility for ourselves. But this builds the trust bridge if we do what we say we're going to do for a potential prospect. Like we say, we tell someone, oh yeah, I'll send you a video, you know, on molecular hydrogen. If we never send the video, the person's not going to trust that the information, first of all, that we say we're going to do is even true. And second of all, they're going to question our ability to be able to support them in, first of all, purchasing you know, um, our service or our product. And second of all, supporting them in being a successful distributor in the future. So um, we wanna keep up to date and um, current on events, information and trainings um, with our team, our community, and we wanna share it and encourage others to share it too. If we're not tapped into the information database, 
um, meaning the Enagic uh, web system. So we want to make sure that we stay up to date on the information and that we pass it along and encourage others to do so. It sounds like a dinosaur way of doing things, but it really isn't. It allows people to feel like you're taking an interest in their education, your interest in their understanding of what they might potentially be buying or what they have bought into. Um, but staying up to date on information is, is very important. Uh, number three, and it almost should be number one, is be honest from the beginning. And if if you're sharing information on your products and you don't know if they're even true, shouldn't be sharing it. So make sure to do your due diligence in educating yourself properly first so that you can educate others properly in the future. Number four, know what's next. Often new prospects, and I'm calling people prospects, clients, friends, um, people who are potentially coming into your business, often they need to be told um, what the next step is. Uh, if the trust bridge has been built by being honest, by being accountable, and um, by being current, um, if the trust has, bridge has been built correctly, your prospect will be confident in your ability to guide them first through a sale and second of all in support for uses for the business um, just of the future. Sharing the value of the business. This is usually done over multiple exposures to the products and the business opportunity. So when someone's coming in just looking at the product that you're providing, um, they're going to learn a little bit about the business along the way. Uh, Enagic, the company that I'm representing, um, has been in business for over 45 years. Um, it's a no-debt company. I mean, I love sharing uh, information about Enagic because they are just so amazing. Their infrastructure is amazing. Um, oh, here you go. I, I put it on there. The product. Enagic's products are far superior than any competitors. And I can say that because I've done research. And if anyone knows something better than um, Enagic Kong and Water, please reach out and let me know because I, I want to know if there's anything better. Nothing compares. And so I reference people to Dr. Michael Explains the Water on YouTube. Um, also, Dr. Michael Explains the Competition is another video that I'll send people on YouTube. The water works. It creates an answer to a problem and it's needed. So but that's three things basically that I needed to have be true for me um, and for the people around me in order to uh, jump into this project. So the business opportunity, the value of the business also comes from the minimal startup costs. Um, it's for an unlimited return on investment. Enagic doesn't cap us on how much money we can make or ranks we can go up. I mean, it's truly unlimited. Um, potential to refer your way to a free product. So I teach people how to uh, get a Kongen water ionizer on the house it's not without work. There has to be referrals and there is work involved, but in around 10 to 12 um, referrals, um, a person can have a free water ionizer and I have done it now twice. So I've now purchased two water ionizers and I've made more money than I ever spent on my water ionizers. And that's just over a couple of years. So and with the honestly minimal time invested in it, I'm investing more time in it now than I ever was before. So five steps to overcoming sales objections. Now, objections are not something to be feared. Objections are something that can help a distributor gain information on what a potential prospect needs to know, learn, or understand in order to make an educated decision. We're not trying to convince people on the way to a sale. That's not it. We're trying to help people find their own yes or no. And, and these five steps to overcoming sales objections can help us to do that. So number one, we listen to the objection. We listen to the prospect's objection and we hear them out and we do not interrupt. So important. The last thing a person wants to have happen when they are sharing a vulnerability 
which is an objection, it's an unknown. So we wanna to listen to the prospect's objection and hear them out and not interrupt them. Because the last thing a person wants to hear when they're sharing an objection, like, whoa, they're expensive, that's an objection. It's attached to a vulnerability. I don't know if I can afford it. That's the vulnerability. And if I, as a distributor, interrupt them and go, oh, well, they're not, they're not that expensive. We're, we're totally taking away from the prospect the fact that they're sharing their truth with us. So number one, listen. Listen to the objection and do not interrupt the prospect. Number two, reaffirm that you understand their objection fully. They make them feel heard. Use feel, felt, found. And if you haven't you heard or used feel, felt, found, it's it's a very effective way of creating a trust bridge. So to the objection of, whoa, those are expensive. I know how you feel. I felt the same way when I first learned about, about the product. But what I found is, and then we create something. So for me, I found that I was able to pay off my first machine in 10 referrals and then I was just making money. I feel like they were expensive too. And now I understand and I've found that there's way more value, not only in the machine, but in the business plan than I ever knew of when I first heard about Conga Water. So there's a way of hearing what someone else has said, taking the pressure off it, saying, you know, you're not alone in feeling that way. Then we ask a clarifying question to confirm the real objection. And a clarifying question could, are they open? Are they open to referring people and potentially making money? Mm, no, not so much. You know, we'll move on from there. But asking a clarifying question actually throws the ball back into the prospect's court to examine why they think the machines are so expensive. But we'll go over this moving forward. Then we wanna answer their objections. We have scripted responses, though I don't encourage those, um, but just to keep it clear and concise, you can follow a script, just try not to over talk. Clarify, clarify that the prospect's objection has been addressed. Does that make sense? Does that answer that for you? Have I satisfied that for you? We're gonna go over, um, we're gonna go over these five steps. So here it is, the person speaks their objection, we listen. We then respond with a feel felt found. We ask a clarifying question. We go to the script to answer the objection. And then we question again, you know, has this been resolved for you? Did I answer your question? Here is an example. Like I said, the machines are so expensive. I understand how you feel. I felt sticker shock when I first was introduced, but what I found is that the quality of Enagix products are far superior than any other. And the value of the product and the business opportunity is far greater than I initially understood. Just so I'm clear, is it that the machines are too expensive or that they don't fit into your budget? Here's a script. There are numerous ways to finance for a monthly payment, utilize Enagix referral program to get your machine paid for by thank you checks, or if you have good credit, we can use third party 0% options. If you truly want this technology in your life, I can help you find a way to own it. What do you think? Here's another objection. I don't have time to do this business. Feel felt found. I understand how you feel. I felt the same way, not knowing if I had time to spare. What I found is that this business is a very flexible with my schedule. Question, how much time do you think you need for this? That gets the prospect going, hmm, I don't really know. I was thinking like eight hours a day, like my regular job. So here's a script for the distributor. I'm looking for busy people. Busy people get things done. This business is done in the midst of busy schedules. 15 minutes here, 20 minutes there. We can fill that time with anything we choose because we can either be building a business or watching Netflix marathons. 
question. I don't necessarily need to know if you think you have enough time, but are you willing to devote some of your time to accomplish your, and then we insert the prospects why, and we go over in Let's Building a Business, all about our why, the compelling story, what's in it for the prospects. So feel free to jump back there and check it out. Here's another objection. I don't know enough people. I understand how you feel. I felt this, I felt similarly when starting out. What I found is that I'm attracting the right kind of people into my new life now. How many people do you think you need to know? In this business, it's not who you know, but the context in which you know them. This is a great way to get to know new people too. We don't prejudge people and what they might be interest in, interested in or looking for. Question, what I'm really interested in is how much you like people. If you don't enjoy talking to people, then you won't have fun and probably won't show up. This may not be right for you right now. Objection. I've been doing research and there are less expensive ionizers on the market. Oh, I understand. I felt like doing research on other ionizers when I first learned of this technology too. And what I found is Enagic has a far superior product. The quality and attention to detail in manufacturing and infrastructure is over 45 years solid. None of the competitors even compare, though they are all trying. Is this a question of saving a few dollars from the start or looking for the highest quality product with a potential return on investment opportunity? Have I satisfied that for you? Objection, listen, feel felt found, connect. Clarifying question, understanding. A script, clarity. And then a question for closure. That's what these five steps are for. Objections aren't something to be afraid of. Objections actually help us understand the prospect better. What's in it for them or WIIF team? In order for us to share what's in it for them, meaning the prospect, we first have to initiate a conversation that allows the prospect to express their why. The only way is through asking questions. So Enagic is one company. There are thousands of social and network marketing companies out there. And what is the common denominator in all of them? Relationships. What is the best way to build a relationship? Through a conversation. A sale is only a series of conversations and finding out a prospect's why and therefore finding out what's in it for them is the fastest way in creating value um, of your product, of your company, of yourself, or even of your prospect, because some prospects don't even know the value of their own health. Some people have forgotten how good it feels to feel good again. So having a conversation and finding out someone's why, someone's why might be time freedom to spend more time with their kids. Um, it might be time freedom to spend more time on their health. Um, Another person's why is financial freedom so that they can take care of a loved one or financial freedom so that they can travel places because they've always wanted to do that. Um, there's so many other things, uh, you know, one of the spiritual aspects of the three aspects of health is, um, is relationships. Some people get into a business to actually find friends and connect in a like-minded community. And for, for that reason, the what's in it for them in this industry is actually limitless. But we have to learn first how to have the conversation to get to know somebody, how to ask questions in a way that shows we're actually interested in getting to know the person, not that we're trying to find out their why so we know what script to refer to. It's it's finding out how we can relate to the person, how we can connect to them, how we can help them make their dreams, their goals all come true. I really hope that this sheds some light on how to 
um, create value and uh, handle objections in your business, whether it's in Agic or any other social or network marketing, or even if it's in just uh, debating or having a conversation with someone, it's good to give feedback to people, but it feels really good to get feedback from others. So if anybody has anything they want to add to this and knows how to create value and handle objections in a way that's different than I shared today, then I would love it if you would share it with me. So good luck in your prospecting. Remember to keep adding to those lists. Creating value and handling objections happens over time. It's not one conversation, it's many. And be sure to be kind to yourself and to those around you that this is a process, a process and that we're in it together as we grow through it. Reach out to me at conganelizabeth at gmail.com if you have any uh, additional questions or feedback uh, or if you have any suggestions for me for videos in the future. Have a wonderful day and we'll see y'all on the flip side.